some of us are responsible and literally have blood on our hands mm -hmm. uh, for people who did not have to die, including this president, quite frankly. Okay, Reverend Horace Sheffield III, it is really great to see you. It's always great to see you, but especially right now, I feel almost overjoyed to be able to have this conversation with you. Thanks for being here. Well, you know, they say it's better to be seen than to be viewed. <laughs> and so I'm as happy as you are. Yeah, no, I, that, that was quite scary. Um, I was reading social media accounts that, that you were sick. Uh, I was really, really worried. Uh, walk us through what, what you experienced. Well, I, uh, you know, I'm the kind of person who uh, likes to, you know, keep my word. And I had been working on this Greenwood Chamber of Commerce project from Tulsa. You know, the, the, uh, uh, I think you're pretty much aware of what happened there, the massacre there. And I'm the honorary chairperson for their historic site and redeveloping it. We got a $500,000 uh, grant from the Parks Department, but I set up some meetings with Reverend Sharpton and some of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Bloomberg's people, and the, the people were very adamant about not changing the date, because it took so long to get this on the calendar, and I was like, you know, hey, New York is the, is, is the you know, Petri dish of this, <laughs> we'll be fine, so flew in, went to the meeting, Stephen, on my way walking back to the hotel, just, just, is some just, just overtook my body, you know? Wow. And I thought for a moment, maybe it was a sinus cold coming on or a fever. My wife's a nurse practitioner. She told me to get some, uh, you know, some Allegra D, which I did. Laid in the bed that night, I was fired. Uh, I, I had just extreme chills. At any rate, came home and that Monday, I came home on that Friday, that Monday I went to be tested. By the grace of God, my wife works in the hospital system. She's a nurse practitioner. I didn't have a fever. So the protocol that's normally required to be tested, I would not have passed. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was able to be tested anyway. And I you know, basically got the results. But in the meantime, I began to quarantine myself, self-quarantine myself. My wife went and took a test the next day. And I, our results came back within a day of each other. It took 10 days for it to happen. Yeah. Uh, but in the interim, you know, I did come into the office a couple of times. My chief of staff is the only person uh, here in the office because we had closed things down. Uh, they got sick because I was, you know, talking with her at my desk, trying to figure out how we're going to pay people and keep things open and, you know, reduce the amount of harm that people would have to experience in this uh, in this crisis. Yeah, uh, this is a scary disease. It's a scary time. Um, talk about the fear you might have had uh, when you get that positive test back. Well, to be perfectly honest with you, um, as you know, the older you get, the more uh, you're aware of your mortality. You know, when you're, <laughs> right. when you're young, you don't think you're ever going to die. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's not like I haven't had a couple of health challenges, but to be perfectly honest with you, I had to keep fighting back this fear that at any day, this thing could take me out. Mm -hmm. uh, and my family thought I was acting strange because I got in touch with my son and my daughter. I have multiple insurance policies, uh, hit my son on one, my daughter on another, my wife, whatever, letting everybody know where everything was in the house and who was on what. And they're like, oh, you're going to be right. I said, well, look, you know, I don't know. Uh, I talked to Isaac Robinson mm -hmm. two mm -hmm. days before he died. Now, one of the most damnable thing about this is this whole protocol of who could be tested. Yeah. Because Isaac didn't have a fever. Right. I didn't have a fever. And he, you know, basically stayed home. I mean, you know, we were told early on this myth that African Americans were not succumbing or even uh, contracting this. I mean, there's so much stuff that makes me feel as if some of us are responsible and literally have blood on our hands. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. for people who did not have to die, including this president, quite frankly, yeah. who knew about this long ago and said this is going to be down to zero. I mean, I now have talked with enough people, Stephen, to believe that maybe even November, December of last year, people had this. Mm -hmm. They just didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Um, you, of course, are a pastor here in the city of Detroit, and we're hit harder here than people are in other cities, and African Americans here are hit harder than other people in this state. I, I wonder what the last few weeks have been like for you in ministry. Yeah, well, I, I've, I've taken some hits because I've been a person, I just wrote an op-ed uh, last night uh, on all this nonsense, you know, people going to church, having services, more concerned about uh, perpetuating, you know, payments to mortgage companies and all that nonsense. Uh, you know, the Bible says don't tempt the Lord. This is tempting the Lord. Mm. You know, this is this would have been Jesus uh, uh, jumping off the cliff when the devil told him to and told him that God, you know, the angel would bear thee up. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, this is, you know, I have had 41-year-old man in my church. Died. I'm doing two funerals back to back tomorrow and one on Friday of people in my church who have died. You don't think I wonder whether or not me having services uh, up until two weeks ago maybe could have exposed my members? Mm. I mean, it's a possibility. I've asked God to forgive me uh, because I didn't get my test results. I mean, I wasn't sure. So that's nonsense. I mean, people... We can get back to church, you know, uh, we can get on Zoom and Zoom, Zoom, Zoom him, you know, but to be in close proximity doesn't make sense. And uh, maybe this is a time for churches to look at their budgets and, and figure out whether or not, uh, you know, what they spend money on. I'm blessed. We're mortgage free. Uh, so I don't have to worry about that. But both with my church and with Debo. I've managed to be able to keep 95% of my people on, on staff and on payroll and have them work from home. So that's not the issue. The most important issue is, are we saving lives? Are we protecting our people? And that's what a good shepherd has been called to do. On the other end, Stephen, I have found more people who have been loosely connected with the church, had a modicum of sense of, of need for God, who now have become prophets, pundits. <laughs> you know, and, and now, I have all kinds of prophecy. You know, I mean, I have people who are who are on my my broadcast and on my you know uh, on my Mevo broadcast who I haven't seen and given money. <laughs> I had a person give four hundred dollars a day. hadn't given four hundred dollars in ten years. Okay, so uh, I told a few of my friends. I mean, it, 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 you almost wonder whether or not. Uh, this might be the better route to go. Plus, this is the last point. Because we have people that love Jesus and can't stand anybody else, I have no conflict now at the church at all because they're not, they're not around each other. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if you can talk a little about what we're seeing in our city right now. Uh, your family uh, has a, a very long history in this city of uh, serving it, you know, when things are good and when things are bad. Um, yeah. Talk about the this moment in Detroit. Yeah. Well, first of all, let me just say that we worked some things out through some help with Detroit Edison, where tomorrow, which will be before the broadcast on Thursday, and for the next two weeks, uh, almost 10,000 frozen meals will be distributed from my corner. Uh, I mean, chicken, greens, mac and cheese, all in frozen sealed uh, packages. People can take them home and put them in their refrigerator. I think one of the things that we've seen, uh, Stephen, is the degree to which people have arisen and said, you know, we need to do things to mitigate uh, the harm that this uh, has had upon people. I, I will tell you this. Uh, I've had my issues with the mayor. There's no question about that. But I do think in real time. They've listened to my voice. I've been in touch with Alexis Wiley. The testing protocol where people don't have cars, don't have primary care for, uh, physicians, that's not just poor people. I know folks with insurance, mm -hmm. you know, who, who, are, who have PhDs that don't have a primary care physician. The emergency room is normally ours. Mike should have known that. So in real time, a lot of that's been adjusted. I've also come to find out from the governor and other people, a lot of that is because they didn't have the stuff. I mean, and, and we see a president who then wants to punish our state because the governor speaks up and advocates, as I am a pastor and shepherds my people, she's trying to do hers. Thirdly, uh, I think that, you know, 
Uh, there are a lot of other folks who are not known and named. Uh, I've seen people around me that I've never seen do anything for anybody who've been so moved by this crisis, who have stood up and done things. You know, you see it all the time on TV, but there, there are thousands of more people uh, without whom this would have been a lot worse. I think, you know, we've got a lot to go. There's a lot of uh, unknown information still. For example, with me, I still don't feel 100%. I, I had a same kind of conference with my cardiologist yesterday. Uh, my primary care physician is saying to me that it may be six to eight weeks before I get back to normal. Thanks for being with us. All right, my friend. You can find more at OneDetroitPBS.org or subscribe to our social media channels and sign up for our One Detroit newsletter.